Hi everyone, good morning. Sun is coming up, thank goodness. That driving in the dark is, I don't know. But we got, we got uh, like three and a half hours of driving in. We stopped several times just um, just so I could get my bearings and waken myself up and so I just went inside and got cleaned up brushed my teeth and yes it is chilly here I am wearing long pants and my jacket and uh, <laughs> it feels a heck of a lot better than where we just left I'll tell you what way way better uh, so I had one cup of coffee in the truck this morning and then just decided to pack it up and get going. But I knew that um, 20 minutes down the road was a Flying J. So we went down there and I got a, a big cup of coffee there. And uh, so I'm, I'm done with the coffee this morning just as the sun is coming up. And I'm just glad that, the, that it's finally light out because I was... I don't know, it's a little bit stressful driving in the dark. It's just not as comfortable. Come here, come on. That's a boy. Because if there's any you know, road debris, like a blown out tire trad or something from a truck, you'd never see it and you'd go right over it. So I just follow the white line on the right side of the road. That's how I make sure that I'm on the road path. Uh, I did find a couple of semis that I followed for a while, you know, just following their tail lights a ways back, and also watching the navigation, watching the Google Maps, you know, that I can see that there's a, a curve coming up ahead, you know, because when you're driving for a long time on a straight, straight road, and then a curve comes up, it can throw you off, you know, when it's pitch black out there. So I, I glance over and I can see upcoming curves and, and things like that. That helps. That really helps. Boy, these are some pretty wild rock structures back here. See that, like, cave? That's pretty wild. I'm, I don't know, man-made, natural? What are your votes? You can see the debris pile at the bottom. But, I don't know. Man-made or natural? Put your votes down in the comment. Why, why would somebody cut something like that? I see a rope or something going across it at the top. I'll try to zoom in on it when I'm editing. But there's a... I don't know what that is. A rope? A cable? A, there's a straight line up at the top. So, I, I don't know. So, if it is man-made, why would they make it? You know, what's the purpose? Other than mining, but it's so big. I mean, that's really tall. That's pretty far away from us. And I just keep let lefty walk around and sniff all the stuff that's left behind from other dogs. So I'll give you a look all around here. There's the sun hitting the other side. The mesa's over there. Oh, pause video.
So at this point, we had been traveling for 12 hours or more, and I was pretty shot. So I, I was looking for a place for us to park for the night. Uh, there were no rest stops anywhere near where we were, so I, I pulled off on this exit because I saw some truck stops, and none of them looked like any place that I wanted to spend the night. So I said, okay, let me at least throw some diesel in the truck so that if I do see a rest stop or somewhere, we don't have to worry about fuel. We can just pull over and park. I pull up to this place. It's They've cooked some kind of food in there. It's also a gas station. I finally find a pump that has diesel. There's something wrong with the pump, so you got to go inside and pay. And there's a line in there, and the checkout guy is having all kinds of trouble, and I just stood there for about 30 seconds and turned around and walked back out I, I didn't have the patience and I came out of that place with a smell from whatever they were cooking in there and that smell was on me for hours I don't know what it was it was some kind of spice or something and for hours that's all I could smell I finally had to like rinse my nose out because I think it was just inside my nose it was a terrible spicy smell uh, but we got back on the interstate and just kept going trying to find us a place to stop buddy I've about had it for today Lefty is supervising our navigation on this trip. So far he's done good. We haven't made any wrong turns. We are just a couple miles from crossing into Texas from New Mexico. And I told him that as soon as we get into Texas today, the first rest stop, we're done for the day. It's 2 p.m. We started driving at 2 a.m. I'm like a zombie behind the steering wheel. He's pretty bored. He's getting real fidgety. And I need to stop and take a break. 12 hours is usually about my max. That's when I start to lose my concentration. Oh, I think we got the sign coming up. Let me see if I can get it on the camera. I hope so. There's a rest stop that's one of our favorites, but I don't know how far it is into Texas. I think it's too far. There's only like three of them, because this is the panhandle, and I-40, yeah, here it is. Oh, this this is uh, you're leaving New Mexico. Thank goodness. 
Watch the road quality change as soon as we get out of New Mexico. Goodbye, land of enchantment. And watch the road change. Go. Oh. Smooth. Thank you, Texas. New Mexico and Arizona just took five years of life off of this truck. Welcome just, to Texas. There you go. Welcome to Texas. There's the sign. Yep, those two states just took some years of life off of this truck, beating the crap out of it. Lefty said, can we turn and go a different direction? And I, I said, we're committed now to the I-40 route, so we got to stick with it. But man, I-40 in Arizona is really bad. And it doesn't get any better in New Mexico. It's really bad. And then why can't they make it like this? This is so smooth. Everything quiets down. Texas Travel Info Center. Is that a rest stop? I don't know. There's this one rest stop that we've stayed at several times. It's the one where Lefty jumped out the door of the truck and took off running. And I had to chase him down. He ran down to the main building, to the front doors. And I, that's where I caught up to him. Yeah, I don't need him running loose on the side of the interstate. We just need a place to stop for the day. But yeah, yesterday, I just, I fell asleep like, bam, and uh, woke up at 5.30 p.m. and got some more to eat, took Lefty out, and then we came back in and went to bed at like 7.30, and I then I woke up at... 12.30, 30 minutes past midnight, and I couldn't get back to sleep, so I got up at like 1.30, made a cup of coffee, and I said, you know what, better than sitting around here, we might as well just go, so we started the truck up and started driving at like 10 minutes after 2 this morning, and uh We've been going ever since, and it's it just hit 2 o'clock. It's 2 p.m., so just coming up on 12 hours. We are up and at them. It is, well, local time. I believe we're at 4.45 local time. So a little bit more of a realistic uh, time to get on the road here. We woke up at 1 a.m., which is 3 a.m. local time. I had a single cup of coffee. I decided just, let's just get up and go. So I put 30 gallons of diesel in it. It's $3.99 a gallon here. So the first under $4 a gallon that I have bought in, what, a year or more? So thank you, Texas. I actually saw it yesterday on one place we passed. It was $3.49 for diesel. Um, but we were already past it. 
so cheapest diesel in Texas. Thank you, Texas. I really needed some cheaper diesel. Four bucks a gallon, three ninety nine. So we're loaded up with fuel. I got a big cup of coffee from Inside Loves. Clean the windshield. Let the truck warm up. Gave Lefty a couple snacks. Took him out for a walk. We're hitting the road. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's go. You having your dental chew? Ah. Uh, having your dental chew? Good boy. You make sure you get all those crumbs. You're such a crumb slob. I don't like stepping on all of them. Good boy. Get the crumbs. Get these crumbs. Hey, right there. Get those. Get them. I don't know what it is. He won't eat them. You, he's so picky. Huh? First, I got to go through a wrestling match with you. With the, with the dental. That's our little game we play. We go through a little wrestling match. Huh? Usually, he leaves it till later in the day because he's so spoiled on all the chicken and the beef jerky. The dental chew is ranking way down there on the list. All right, let's get going. I'm ready to go. All right, we got the uh, we got the trip programmed into the old tripometer. This guy's ready. You want to see a bright interior light? Woo! Look at that. Yeah, that thing lights it up in here like it's the biggest Christmas tree you got, huh? Wow. There's my love's cup of joy. We're ready to go. Yeah, there it is. $3.99. Well, that's your cash price, so I'm guessing what? $4.05 for the card. Can you see it? $3.75. Ah, it's not showing up. $3.75 for card. 369 cash. Wow, that's the cheapest. 375. So this is Amarillo. I'm pretty sure that we're passing through, and I've been through here, you know, several times, but never with no traffic like this. So this was really, <laughs> this was awesome that we're cutting through here at this time of day with no traffic. Speed limit 60 through here. This stretch has been under road construction for the last four years. This is the first time that I haven't had like, had to shift lanes with cones and stuff, but they're still not done. This, this road still needs some repair. the big Texan that's the place where if you can eat the, the 72 ounce I think it is if you can eat the whole piece of meat you get it for free with the sides and everything I, I've never seen anybody eat it in all the videos I've watched but I'm sure somebody has that's a lot of meat that's a big hunk of meat $349. That's the credit price. $349.9. I don't think you can see it. It's all blurry. Wow. I bet you by the time we get back to New York, we're going to be paying $450. Another dollar a gallon. I'll bet you. So we're just about to break out of the city here. Get out into some clear road speed limit increase we are on 40 east I love this stretch of road here this is where you start to see all of the windmills and I don't know if you can pick them up off to the side there but this whole area it must be a, a, a wind zone or something because the windmills are everywhere there they are yeah, they're everywhere around here. And this stretch of road, I've traveled it 
many, many times. I'm very familiar with it. And it's a nice, smooth strip of road with a lot of gas stations at many different exits that you can stop at. So I don't know what it is about this stretch, but I just I enjoy driving this piece of road right here. You know, one of the things that I think is worth mentioning, at least, is that uh, both Robert and I were looking at the, the old radiator, and it had quite a bit of clogged areas from, you know, bugs and garbage and branches. And so we definitely should have a better flowing radiator. Absolutely, we should. The other one had, had some areas that were pretty bad. But, you know, how do you get in there? The only way to clean those uh, is to remove the radiator from the vehicle. You can't really use a pressure washer because then you're gonna bend over the fins. So how do you clean a radiator? I, I am not an expert at that. If you, have, if you have the expert way of cleaning a radiator, put that down in the comments so that everybody can see but I and I do believe that the only way to really do it well is to remove the radiator now getting the radiator out is not difficult at all uh, you know you get yourself some drain pans under there so that you can reclaim your your coolant so that you're not wasting it all so then it then you're talking about it not even costing you anything But if you have the way to clean a radiator, put it down in the comments so, so that we can share it with everybody. So I'm, I'm not expecting there to be any issues. I can't tell you how good it feels right now to be back behind the wheel. I, I can't explain it. I don't know why I feel so good. I feel so good right now to be back driving this vehicle. This, it's... Wow, this is like Christmas morning. Robert, I know you're watching this. Thank you, brother, for coming by, sacrificing your Sunday. I know you got called into work on Saturday, so I'm assuming you had to get up and go to work today on Monday. So you sacrificed your only free day, Sunday, to come here. And I think if I'm right, you, your drive is about two hours each way. So we, we spent uh, from nine till, we were cleaned up and done at one o'clock. And then you had another two hours. So you must have left your place at 7 a.m. and then got back home at three. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming by to help. It just gave me the confidence to do the job, knowing that if we ran into trouble you're there, you've got a running vehicle if we needed to run to the parts store. So that is priceless, having that feeling and that comfort in my pocket, so to speak, priceless. So thank you so much for coming. I, I, I owe you one, brother, I really do, I owe you one. And I know you keep saying no, no, I owe you one. If there's ever anything you need that I can do for you or a piece of gear that you're looking for that I just happen to have, it's all yours. <laughs>